Have you ever worked for a democratic leader? After this lesson, you might notice some characteristics that you have in common with this leadership style. This is the second lesson in a three-part series. Be sure to take a look at the other lessons on the autocratic leadership style and the laissez-faire style. Early research on leadership styles started in the late 1930s. Lewin, Lippitt, and White compared and contrasted these three styles. That's where all this came from. In their studies, they created groups of 10-year-olds and had adults leading those groups use various styles. The researchers wanted to know how these kids would respond to these different styles of leadership. And they rotated different teachers in to lead those groups of kids as they performed regular old 10-year-old tasks like painting murals and carving soap and making model airplanes. And even though they did this research by looking at a teacher-student dynamic, this research laid the foundation for much of the way we still look at leadership styles today and how those different leadership styles cause different outcomes. To help us visualize it, we see the democratic leadership style in characters like Captain Jean-Luc Picard from Star Trek, Dick Winters, the commander of Easy Company in The Band of Brothers, and Nova Prime, played by Glenn Close in Guardians of the Galaxy. These characters echo what we see in the democratic leadership style. Democratic leaders take a collaborative approach with their followers. Even though democratic leaders still have a position of power and still make many of the big decisions, they prefer to get feedback and input from followers to help leaders shape those decisions. They like to listen to a range of opinions to make sure they're hearing about all the good options. They have what you call a two heads are better than one philosophy. A leader might even test ideas with followers and say, hey, here's what I was thinking of doing. What do you think? Or I've been hearing negative feedback about this external vendor we've been using. What has been your experience with this vendor? In cases like these, the leader may still make the ultimate decision. But at other times, democratic leaders may delegate power to followers when they can, especially when those decisions directly influence the followers' jobs. This is called a decentralized approach to power and authority that contrasts with the centralized approach of autocratic leaders. In other words, as the official leader, a democratic leader still has the right to make decisions just like the autocratic leader, but instead delegates those decisions and provides the freedom to followers to make the best choices possible. So let's say a department, a team, is about to purchase new computers. A democratic leader would likely give some basic criteria on cost or compatibility, but then delegate the final decision, and each follower would purchase their own computer. I'd like to make an important point about this. If a decision goes badly, the democratic leader is not off the hook. They are still responsible for the outcomes and for the team decisions. So they're not handing their power and responsibility over. They can't delegate their accountability. They just believe the best decisions will be made with lots of input from their followers. In terms of power distance, democratic leaders tend to have more equal relationships between themselves and followers. So they establish a low power distance compared to autocratic leaders. The gap between the leader and the follower does not feel as obvious. To make that concrete, democratic leaders would be more approachable and friendly in conversations and make efforts to connect with followers. They have good communication and might ask followers about their projects and about their lives outside of work and react more spontaneously in conversations. To be clear, democratic leaders still have what French and Raven call legitimate power that is tied to their position, but they don't emphasize that. They tend to rely more on mutually beneficial relationships with followers to have that influence. They trust their followers to provide helpful feedback and to make good decisions. In terms of outcomes, many followers prefer to work for this type of leader. I was recently looking at a 2019 study on the leadership styles of headmasters over the teachers they supervise in the Journal of Education, Teaching, and Learning. And these authors found that the headmasters with the democratic style of leadership had a clear 
positive influence in handling discipline situations with teachers. It's important to note that the autocratic and laissez-faire headmasters did still address discipline and showed some effectiveness with followers. But the democratic style was the most effective. It was more effective than laissez-faire. And then lastly, autocratic leaders were the least effective. So those other styles still were effective, just not as effective as democratic leaders. Let's look at the ups and downs of the style. We'll start with the strengths. Democratic leaders tend to make high quality, informed decisions. They gather lots of input, so their decisions are very likely to be supported and executed by their followers. Followers of democratic leaders can get more creative and innovative because they are given room to practice problem solving. Democratic leaders get consistent, long-term productivity out of their followers. And this is a key difference between democratic and autocratic leaders. When an autocratic leader leaves the room, their followers do not work as hard. In contrast, democratic leaders' followers work hard whether they are in the room observing or not. Followers are bought into the decisions, goals, and directions. These leaders have also good communication with followers, and not surprisingly, followers have a high satisfaction level when working under democratic leaders. In terms of drawbacks, we see mainly weaknesses in certain situations. So first, when a situation is high pressure and time is short, like a crisis, maintaining the democratic style probably will not help much. If something suddenly happens to an organization, it might be the best response is the quickest response. And sometimes that means a democratic leader is not going to be able to take a lot of time to gather input and feedback. They're not going to have the luxury of collaborating in a situation like that. I like to use the metaphor of professional sports. When there are just a few seconds left on the clock and your team is down by one point, that's not the time to have a long, democratic, collaborative discussion. A democratic style is not going to fit that situation. A second weakness shows up in the situations that sometimes require a judgment call on the part of a leader because consensus is not possible. And you may have to make a decision that fractures the harmony of the group for a while. A third weakness shows up when you have a follower who is not particularly trustworthy. So if the leader is a team player, but the follower is not, the democratic leadership style may not be as suitable for that follower. Overall though, the democratic style is largely viewed as the most effective of the three styles we're looking at. Most research sees it that way, and most people with practical experience see it that way too. It doesn't fit all situations equally, but it's a solid leadership style for most people most of the time. So my question for you is, does this sound like your style of leadership? If so, you're probably off to a good start. Most followers will do well under your style. Just recognize that some situations may call for another approach. As mentioned, this is the second video in a three-part series on leadership styles. Be sure to take a look at the lesson on the autocratic and laissez-faire styles in those videos. I will put links to those in the description below this one. So thanks, and I'll see you soon.